House of the Dragon star Emma Darcy makes GQ's Men of the Year list. Believe it or not. Um, I also had to check. I don't know if it's Darcy or Darcy, but I, I imagined that the, the... Even if it's Darcy, we're still going to say Darcy because we don't care. Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I care. Uh, what I found from this list is, that first of all, like we said before, we looked into this. It's not the first time that women have been included in the GQ Men of the Year list, as far as we know. Yeah, apparently saw, this is just how they do it. They include women in every list. I don't know when they started doing that, but there was, they've included Serena Williams, Jennifer Lopez, Jennifer Aniston, Megan Thee Stallion, and five other women on this year's list other than Emma Darcy yes in a list that totals to 17 so we've got these are the list of the different names I'm going to read through the the ones that were we have Marissa Abella uh Sheila Atim Emma Darcy or Darcy I'm, I'm going to go back and forth and you're never going to know which one okay. S. Devlin <laughs> Leon Edwards Mo Farah or Farah Stephen Graham Stephen Graham uh Miala Mihala Harold, Sharon Horgan, <laughs> Michael Imperioli, uh, David John Johnson. Is it Johnson? Is it just probably Johnson? Johnson. New on Timcast Media. Brett Dasovic mispronounces names. You want to read the rest then, smart guy? No. Wow. <laughs> Are you guys gonna fight again? <laughs> Maybe. Right here. Right now. Lee Jung Jay, <laughs> Harry uh, Latway, uh, Louis Thoreau, uh, Joseph Quinn, Ashley Walters, and Ben Wishaw. I knew about. Three or four of these names. The rest of them I didn't. I knew Ben uh, Ben Wishaw. I knew Lee Jun Jay. I knew Louis I, Theroux because he's a documentarian, and I knew Joseph Quinn because he's on Stranger Things. Yeah, and, and I knew and I knew Michael Imperioli because he was on The Sopranos and a bunch yeah, of other that shows that I watch. Uh, the rest of them were all mysteries to me. The only one I remembered from House of the Dragon was uh, Millie Alcock because she was. A big name at the beginning of it and that's who yeah. when they age up the character that's who emma darcy's character becomes because that's uh rain targaryen really because so, i thought that uh millie alcock played the young version alicent or was that other one the other right. one so okay, okay. so basically here what we have is uh emma darcy is non-binary and identifies with they them pronouns uh, it is weird to me that, like you said, they've included women on the list before. It's a very gender binary term for uh, what right. could just easily be called person of the year. Yeah, and I sure. don't know why they have to pick a large pool of people anyway, because yeah. then that takes the spotlight and focus off of what you are celebrating them for. Yeah. Isn't the whole point of non-binary that you don't identify as a man or a woman? Yeah, you'd need a separate award. Right. Uh, award but team. whenever that... people pointed this out in response, they were shot down and said, uh, like, you know, it's historically both men and women on the list and Emma Darcy identifies as neither. So it's fine for for Emma Darcy yeah. to be on this list. What, what I noticed looking through this list, uh, outside of the UFC fighter, um, I just see a lot of uh, Hollywood's desire to socially engineer men to be a lot less masculine than they're actually uh, designed to be. This is also <laughs> Hollywood's desire to pat themselves on the back yeah. at every opportunity because why would a man of the year or I suppose this one is human of the year award be given to an actor because I think that actors and actresses offer some of the least value to society. Uh, well, I'm going to say the it's I, I have a list here or I'm sorry, not a list, but it says uh, by Mike Christensen says November 4th, 2022. This month, we're celebrating the 25th GQ Men of the Year event, which recognizes the best and brightest talent from across culture, sports and entertainment. So it's specific to those fields. Literally, what's the point of calling it men? Like, I, I don't get it. I don't get it either. So, just to subvert expectations, I suppose. I, I, no, I, I think part of it is because they want to muddle the definition of what that word means, even. And I, I think back to what Brad Pitt said like a month ago when he says that he found the Clint Eastwood version of masculinity tiresome. Uh, being a guy is tiresome, having, uh, <laughs> Any type of testosterone is apparently tiresome to uh, to Brad Pitt in all of Hollywood. And it does feel like an agenda to kind of push people socially uh, away from the idea of masculinity. I was watching a video over the weekend 
where it was one of the, it was like a boilerplate Jordan Peterson clip, and it was it was on social media talking about uh, the necessity of men versus uh, what society is telling them they need to be these days. And there was this really really vile comment that was meant to be vile in the comments that basically told all men like you're worthless, you mean nothing. It was very clearly a troll comment, but the level of vitriol still meant that somebody had to type that comment out and actually say that. And it was like, as a man, you're useless. You mean nothing to society. You're worthless. Uh, and it's mm-hmm. in a weird contradiction because when we look at the way Hollywood is now casting their movies for roles, it seems like they want to tell all women that they have to behave like men anyways. That mm-hmm. to be uh, the best version of a woman, you have to be a, a, a discount version of a man. So yeah. is it like a super low key, like chicks suck this then? This? Uh, well, I mean, it's doing a disservice to everyone on all sides but i think specifically what gq is trying to do as they are officially a men's magazine but not really because they don't appeal to men not actual men. what they're doing is taking the opportunity to undermine any attempt at celebrating men's accomplishments or Men with notoriety. Uh, no Zelensky in- on that list. I imagine Zelensky wow. would have ended up on that list. True. Oh, yeah, yeah. Big missed opportunity there, they're, guys. They're He'll be in the woman of the year. Not, <laughs> like, GQ is clearly not doing anything to appeal to a male audience. No. And they're undermining a uh, reasonable desire to just recognize notable men in entertainment. Is there a bastion for manhood right now? Uh no, I mean, okay. is Men's Health still uh, appeal to men? I have even no idea. like Sports Illustrated, not even magazine. I mean, no anything. fat chicks taken over. No fat chicks, according there's to been, Jordan Peterson on Sports Illustrated. Based. Yeah, there's been a complete uh, leadership. No, but they change. have Elon Musk's mom. No old ladies yes. either. Um, yeah, that was really creepy. Yeah, lest we forget. The uh, to to me it feels like what they're what they're advertising here too is to women who don't understand what they actually want from men. Like this GQ isn't for men; it's for women that imagine they want men to be a certain way when historically we're we're told something very very different. I just don't understand what the criteria are for nominating someone to this list. Is yeah. it displaying certain masculine traits? Is it? like people whose accomplishments are characteristically masculine nope like i don't know it it just feels demeaning to the women who are put on the list and it feels also demeaning to the men who are put on the list and overshadowed by women on it it is kind of i I do kind of uh at least for the darcy bit i do kind of put the blame on on caitlin jenner (laughs) For, for what happened a few years ago when yeah. Caitlyn Jenner, uh, first year as a woman, decided to prove that uh, he was better than all women by beating all the women for Women of the Year. And you pointed out that, of course, Glamour's Woman of the Year award is not something that you enter a contest to win. Yeah. So it is actually kind of random. Um, but, like, clearly there's a problem on both sides where they're trying to dilute the meaning of both woman and man. Yeah. And every space that traditionally was for putting the spotlight on a man or woman who is successful is being taken over in reverse. So men are encroaching upon women's spaces, women are encroaching upon men's spaces, and then ultimately everyone loses. And they wonder why society is, is sick and unaware of how to deal with things because there's no there's no actual uh, solid ground to, to walk on anymore. Everything is kind of up in the air. And it reminds me of uh, the other one was uh, Sports Illustrated. I remember, I'm, I'm sorry, Playboy, when they're like, we're not going to feature hot women anymore. We're going to feature <laughs> natural women. And everyone's like, we don't want that. And Sorry. I mean, it's True. not like I would be fully behind what playboy was about before that or before with hugh hefner at the helm i am someone with traditional values so i oppose it either way but you're replacing the you know patriarchal order with something that's even worse which nobody wants like it's one thing to make a patriarchal product that may have moral pro- you know something that ha- causes moral qualms for you but sells well and does well in a market that it's meant to operate in instead of just being something that it's 
totally taken over. It's making something antithetical to what its actual audience wants. And then they wonder, well, why is it failing? But it, It's failing because every single piece of media is controlled by activists. And every written or video thing is at the behest of activists. And it's insane. Like if you watch sports right now, it, yeah. every play gets interrupted. Well, lest we forget this cause is like, Brother, who scored the point? Yep. Uh, so it says, Emma DRC, it says, uh, just to head this up, this question off of the past, Emma DRC is non-binary and uses they, them pronouns. At first, I figured that was part of the reason GQ chose to include them on the men of the year list. However, the list also includes several cis women. Also, I, I am against the term cis. Uh, I think it's another uh, you're adding more that needs than needs to be well, there. Well, it's True. trying to impose their language yes. onto everyone else who isn't in the know you know the but i i can't help but think that emma darcy is posturing with this identity to bolster her acting career and get more roles and i think it's actually working against her because yeah it makes you like even though emma darcy is playing a woman and is portrayed as a woman on screen and is just you know for some odd reason we have no idea why is good at playing yes, a woman character she, she says that she says uh <laughs> for she says i i'm very good at playing women characters that's uh that is bad. are like i don't think you're going to get casted in male roles simply by identifying as non-binary it doesn't make you more marketable as an actor to uh, Elliot identify pa this way. i don't mean to be snide Elliot but page gets to play both characters now men and women based uh i don't mean to be Not snide based. I, I don't know. I'm just saying it as a filler. Um, wh what did she do before uh, House of Dragons? I'm just asking because like you know a lot about actors typically. I'd never heard of Emma Darcy. Before I hadn't. This. I hadn't heard of any of the House of the Dragon. Um, but uh, I do believe that in a lot of cases nowadays, putting a label on your name like uh, like non-binary is a marketing tool for your acting career. Uh, I don't want to. I can't assume what's in their heart and in their head, but I do understand that. In the early stages of it, now I can't remember this actor's name. It was a there was an actress who was in um, the first. I'm sorry, the second season of Arrow, and she ended up. She was one of the first times I'd ever seen. In fact, I'm gonna look it up. Uh, was non-binary, and I, it was so long ago that when I was in her character, it was not in the character. She played oh, a female okay. character, but uh, when I was reading her IMDb, I, I kept getting confused because they kept referring to the actress, the act the, the non-binary uh, professional as a they them and I couldn't understand why they were why the writing was so weird for it back then yeah. in 2012 I believe that that person in their heart believes feels whatever they feel and that's who they are now I'm more cynical I don't believe that everyone who's just happening to come out now is uh, honest in their intentions I think there's a lot of social engineering I think there's a lot of ambition I think there are mixed intentions that they have and if one of them is to live your true self or whatever, and another intention that you have is to bolster yourself in the media as representing a certain group, and therefore any casting decision made in your favor is a win for representation, um, I don't know if this identity marker actually benefits them at all. And that's why it's more popular actually for... Uh, musicians to identify as non-binary -bin I've noticed like I know Lil Uzi Vert identifies as non-binary Demi Lovato that's, re that's recent though with Lil Uzi Vert though right in the last however many months or yeah all of these are are more recent but like Demi Lovato is included in that list Sam Smith is included in that list and then when I looked further into this all of the actors who identify as non-binary who are not in the music industry at all are relatively small names who have had smaller roles. So it looks like they're trying to use this identity to propel their career and it's not working out for them because it doesn't make you more marketable as an actor. How lazy are people that work in like public relations right now that they literally only beat the one tone? Like this is the only move for Hollywood people is that you're non-binary now. You're LGBTQ or whatever. Like, this is the only angle. And we don't know how much of it is coming from management. Bex Taylor Kloss was the name of that act, uh, that actor. I couldn't think of it. Like, what happened to sex tapes? 
<laughs> we used to be a country, Dane. We used to be a country. We used to be a country. That's is, a valid point. Is our sex things more dignified than pretending to be non-binary? Um, Genuine question. It's like I mean, they're more effective. You can see that. You can see from Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton's situation was different, but you also know, Paris Hilton. You know what they should do next? They should do their own version of gender reveal parties for people that are in like their 30s and acting where they do a gender That's reveal. That's a real thing, though. Oh I, I've seen that before that, <laughs> you know, people coming out as transgender or non-binary or whatever, yeah. they do throw like coming out parties that are basically gender reveals. And it's like truly revealing how infantile this is i love that you said that as a joke and it's like oh buddy we're there no 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 yeah (laughs) it feels like just the most cynical form of social engineering through ambition from the celebrities to they're doing it uh, to bolster their profile and raise their image uh online and in their profession and society and the activists that are working in the mid-tier levels of these companies because that's where it happens right they get in early uh and then by the time they've infected the company there's nothing you can do about it um unless you're elon musk and you buy the company and you try to oust them listen what's wrong with sex tapes what's wrong with <laughs> being fake incarcerated what's wrong with hitting paparazzi m- marrying hitting p- another gr- another class grabbing grabbing a, a paparazzi ma- was camera and bashing it on remember the when quentin tarantino literally just assaulted somebody on the street <sighs> weren't those the days violence guys? those were great and <laughs> Bjork did that too. Bjork threw yeah. down on some paparazzi. I remember, and that video was so cool. Marrying someone and get, then getting instantly divorced. That was a thing. That was a big one. Love that. Let's Britney. do some of these. Love I'm that. A- Even Kim Kardashian, she did that one too. She did the sex tape and the super quick marriage and divorce. There we go. And isn't she a cultural phenomenon? She's the queen phenomenon. of PR. Well, she should know. Fair, nostalgia is a thing. So those will probably come back around eventually. Like in ten, it, in ten in ten years, <laughs> in ten years it will be it will be passe to be uh, a, a trendy identity. They're gonna be like, sure, you could be. Uh, thank you. Uh, you could be this identity, but how about this? How about we get you married to an abusive musician, and then we send you off to Vegas, uh. and then you come back with a sex tape, and then we start marketing you from there. Love the it. The thing is, let's do it. I think they thought like. Sex positivity is making all of these things that used to be notable in the news cycle completely acceptable yeah. and just garden variety celebrity drama that no one's interested anymore in anymore. It's not shocking. It's not but something I, that they can be shamed for anymore. Dating even, Pete Davidson? I even like headlines yeah. about celebrities gaining weight are not allowed to be published anymore because but, it's body shaming. But the media has totally become tame and in really like stepping in service of celebrities at this point instead of being the enemy actively like the the enemy i would argue their interests i would argue that the don't worry darling drama proves that there's still a market for standard celebrity gossip but you are right that the media now works for the celebrities rather than against them yeah and i'm sure you guys remember better than i do that um the media like actually shit on celebrities like they were ruthless in attacking them and mocking them constantly and britney was a victim of that i remember i don't remember if it was matt taibbi or christian toto made a a comment about that about how they seem to be in they're in in lockstep with the pr teams what about having illegitimate children (laughs) all these ideas yeah but it's like you can't Drake be shamed for doing these things anymore. Yeah. So it's not interesting. I'm not saying to be shamed. I'm no. just saying to get the eyes on you. The next will be uh, sex tapes with conservatives. That oh. will be scandalous. They'll be like, oh, that's good. <laughs> that's Take good. Take notes. Let's go. Take notes. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.